This is my third attempt at making this video, and if you've seen all of them, I'm really, really sorry for wasting your time. Um, but I also do think that this is the video people have been waiting to see. Um, which is, what do you do when the avoidance sort of reaches peak. Um, the first video I put up was kind of useless. It was just, uh, first of all, what people do, <laughs> which is avoid more um, and, you know, try to self-medicate and also the crap that everybody hears from therapists, etc. of what you're supposed to do, which is, you know, self-care and, you know, get people to help you as if that's possible. Like, I know how stupid that first video was. And then the last one was absolutely ridiculous. I was a mess. I mean, I am a mess, but, you know, that one was a little bit more on target. You know, what do you do is, um, as far as real advice, what do you do? You acknowledge it, first of all, because... Um, it's really hard to do that. I mean, you think one of the things with people with avoidant personality disorder is they don't realize when things are changing, uh, which is the biggest reason why I recommend having a therapist is so that they can say, Hey, you know, you were like this three months ago and now you're like this because for some reason it doesn't register. Um, and so when you're in the pit of it, feels like it's never going to go away again. And also you don't want to believe it. You don't want to see it. You want to pretend it's not happening. Sort of ignore it and it will go away type thing. Um, just like getting a diagnosis. Now again, I call these people with that are self-diagnosed and they think they know what they're talking about. It really is different for somebody with an actual personality disorder as opposed to traits. Um, and more or less, people don't self-diagnose. More or less, people when they get the diagnosis have never even heard of it. Why? Because people with avoidant personality disorder don't think they're worthy enough to go do the research to find out what's going on with them. They don't look it up online. They only get their diagnosis when they really truly hit a crisis. In other words, when they're at the lowest or peak. Oh, I'm going to drive you crazy with these mixed metaphor type things. But yeah, when you're at the worst, when you really truly cannot function, That's when you, you know, get a diagnosis because you're forced to, one way or the other. Um, so acknowledging it, just like getting a diagnosis, it's sort of like, it kind of gives you a break, but not really. It's more like, it's just like, okay, this is real. Um, and the second thing to keep in mind uh, is to remember is it is like a pendulum. It does get better and it does get worse. And wherever you are, I mean, the scariest, most horrible thing is knowing it could even get worse. But it will also definitely eventually get better. And you might actually learn how to cope better in the process. Possible. Don't put that pressure on yourself. In retrospect, you might, sorry, still recovering, might realize that you did this or that and it worked better for you. Um, and the third real piece of advice from that other video 
that I've already taken down um, was dealing with other people, which is if there's somebody who has a clue and they've earned it. I don't know, that's gross, and people shouldn't have this, I shouldn't have this consumerist overlay of dealing with relationships, and that's because of my messed up childhood that I do that, but seriously, you know, I'm not talking about your neighbor, I'm talking about the person you live with, um, who's been around the block for 5, 10, 20 years. And they know about your diagnosis and they know, you know, you don't have to explain anything. They've already got a clue. Let them know. Um, because it is a shot in the cheek when you have to deal with somebody who's really hit the skits. And it's about impossible not to take it personally. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, and the opposite side of that is, if, especially that one or two people, depends how big your immediate family is. Um, If they try to show you, especially more than just talk, but to show you that the avoidant thoughts are not right, try not to dismiss it to them. You're going to dismiss it, of course, but it is a shot in the teeth, again, for you to not allow them to care even if you don't think it's worthy, even if you think they're crazy for caring at all. And clearly that shows that there's something wrong with them because why are they caring for you? Um, keep that to yourself. Try to accept it, even if it makes you sick. But, so those were the first two videos. The biggest, the biggest, real biggest piece of advice that I could give you is to be aware. Um, again, that pendulum thing. No, it's coming. It's eventually coming. You're never going to, definitely never going to stay in a good place. And you're probably not going to be able to maintain medium um, for very long. It keeps changing, it keeps moving, people with avoidant personality disorder, they just can't keep it, you know, going a certain way. Um, so if, if you know, um, what is going on, I want to say it helps. It doesn't like actually make anything better at all. And I've said before, oh, it'll give you a break if you know this. And I don't think that's true either. But just knowing what's going on, it's sort of like it's out of your control. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Got to wait it out. Um, the other thing that's really important that everybody should do sort of as a, um, prep for this, when it's going to hit, is to really truly know the difference between depression and peak avoidance, because they are different, because I look a mess right now, but I... I'm not, like, terribly, horribly depressed. Really, I'm not. 
because I can still function all the ways that I have to. Whereas, you know, if you're, if you're truly depressed, then, you know, you're in bed all day. You're sleeping 20 hours a day. You can't, you know, do normal behavior. When you're at peak avoidance, you can still do your life. You just really, 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 really do not feel worthy. And you can't acknowledge it at all. And dealing with people just pushes you over the edge. Um, uh, you know, you're hypersensitive to s sort of snubs. Um, you're looking for proof that you're not worthy. You know, things like, I mean, one of the things that drives me crazy um, that I was told about by my therapist, who, by the way, I don't work with anymore due to, what did she call it, therapy intervening behaviors of her own. In other words, she just wasn't doing a good job. She was actually making my life worse. That happens. That means your therapist is burnt out. That means it's time to get a new one. And she kept saying, well, I don't tell anybody that I'm going through hell. But you know what? Other people, guess what? Now, granted, I mean, it's just not fair. It's kind of like, you know, the celebrities do get people sending them all this other crap. And they don't need it because they can pay for it themselves. Normal people, when they're going through stuff, People notice it because they suddenly shut up, and so they help them out. Um, apparently, it's my fault. Because I don't say, hey, life is hell, but secondarily, that work. Um, my issues are definitely serious. So it's not like wine, wine, wine. You know, my job is stressing me out. It's like, God, I wish it was just that. So easy. Job is stressing you out. Quit. Which I know that's like massively hypocritical. That's not so easy. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Things I'm going through, I can't quit. Well, there's one way I could quit. Um, but again, I'm not depressed. Really. I'm just... Hugely, massively triggered, you know, and then in my case, this is, this is what's awful. I have way too many people in my life because they're all, um, health workers, etc. Um, and I have people that are seriously like needing me to step up and do stuff for them. There's those people. There's the people who are actually trying to be in my life but when you have avoidance you can't acknowledge that they care for you or else you know that just doesn't work um and then there are the people who i would actually want to hear from and oh, because the truth is, even when I am hearing from the people that I would want to hear from, it's overwhelming and I want to run and hide from them. That's peak avoidance.